20 wickets tumble on frenetic first day at Edgebaston. Both Warwickshire and Hampshire started their divisional stage campaigns with draws, albeit in different circumstances. The Bears had batted beautifully at Old Trafford, Hampshire had rather hung on. They were made to wait to get their second game started though, Covid scare seeing them start an hour late. But the wait was worth it for the hosts, Weatherly quick to depart, LBW for four. Hampshire denied them further breakthroughs though, Allsop and Holland built a second wicket partnership, first targeting 50 runs before the break. But they wouldn't be able to get there still together. Allsop out, caught behind off Rose for 15. He removed Gubbins too, caught for a duck off three balls. The Bears started to come a little unstuck. And Chamar Holder made it four in the next over. Holland out, caught by Yates for 28. It was a procession, and Rhodes kept up the pressure. Dawson only able to add one before he had to go. And another. Felix Organ out for nine, as Benjamin and Yates practiced their volleyball skills in the slips. Barker was right behind, his innings out after just three or five. Fuller was out to the very next delivery. And Vince showed some fight in the next over, but he'd become Rhodes' fifth victim of the innings, caught aiming another big shot over the leg side. They'd had just one run before Abbas fell caught by Miles in the slips. Lunch taken with the final wicket, Hampshire all out for 89. If last week Hampshire's batting had been their highlight, it was the bowlers who'd shone back at Edgebaston. Hampshire had held on against Yorkshire last time out, but they'd been unable to do so again. They'd been made to pay Rhodes with 5 for 23, all four bowlers with wickets to their names. Hampshire, though, knew that the pitch they had struggled on was now their ally, and they got some help early. Yates, LBW, as Barker had the ball swinging. That'd soon be two. Benjamin caught in the slips to give Barker another. There was no change to the score when Abbas had Sibley out and still no progress when Rhodes fell to the very next ball. Lamb avoided falling to deny Abbas's hat-trick, but he couldn't deny Barker a third. Caught behind for six, Hayne and Burgess finally gave Warwickshire something approaching stability, and they found their way past 50. They were Warwickshire's most potent pair so far, a good period for the Bears, the fight back on, and a 50 partnership brought up in 93 balls. That left them just two behind at tee with the score 87 for 5. And they wouldn't be able to move into the lead without losing another wicket. Burgess out for 27 to give Abbas his third. Hayne helped his side to 100. Three figures on the board, quite an achievement considering their start. But he'd be unable to get much further. Out for 41, yet another for Abbas, who was impressing on his return. Craig Miles fell with the score on a superstitious Nelson. 111 for 8 when he was well held by Weatherly for Barker's fourth. Abbas deserved his five wicket haul, sealed when he had Norwell caught in the slips for six. Barker had his as well, Briggs his fifth, caught by Abbas, and Warwickshire were all out for 116, the lead 27. It was a familiar story, the match into the third innings after just a day of play. Only three Bears batsmen had managed to breach double figures, four players unable to get off the mark, as Abbas and Barker shared the wickets and hauled Hampshire back into the game. Weatherly and Holland raced their way back to parity. That was achieved in the fifth over of the innings, and Hampshire played their way on, all the way to 41. The umpires allowed play to go on past seven. When the visitors trudged off, their lead was now 14. They left the field of play delighted with how they finished, considering how the day had begun for Hampshire. A fantastic display of bowling from Barker and Abbas had given them some hope. But another day like this tomorrow, and we could be looking at a two-day match.